Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Air Hauler 2 with me and we heard 37. So our last fight, we ended up over here at Cooney, over in Athens, Ohio. And we're going to take this short flight, um, it's only 63 miles, up to 6i6. They actually call it Darby Dan. <laughs> I actually looked up on AirNav and they had it as something else for the FAA identifier. I can't remember, can't remember what it is. Um, there's no procedures, it's a private little airship. It's one of those... That's what I'm kind of afraid of. It's one of those, like, um, FSX, those long and skinny little uh, runways. I actually hate those. But if that's what it is, that's what it is. I'm kind of afraid that is probably what it's going to end up being. But uh, here at Cooney, we're going to take off on runway 25, just like we came in, heading of 248 degrees. And we're going to go over to Darby Dan. <laughs> kind of a weird name for it. Kind of like it. Um, but the wind, as you can see, is kind of coming from the southwest, so we'll just go ahead and land on runway 27, heading at 274 degrees. Airport elevation is going to be about 925 feet. It's only 63 miles, pretty short flight, taking some 348 pounds on baby toys. By the way, I went up to options. Everything I kept running into a lot of problems when I was looking for jobs to do. A lot of them were um, getting way, way, way too heavy. Um, kind of getting out towards the max of that plane, and when I maxed out before, we had really a hard time because it was uh, so tail heavy. Cause they had to put so much stuff in the back. Um, so I went into options, kind of lowered it a little bit, and I think I went down a little bit on the length of the flight. So I should probably move that back because uh, when it generated the jobs the first time, you see there a lot of them were really, really short. So I should actually, I'll actually go ahead and do that. Job creation options, distance, we can move that back up a little. We'll see, I don't want to get too far, but uh, yeah. So I moved the volume, or yeah, job, I moved that up. The distance, I moved that down. Size, I moved that down. And I'm kind of happy with the size. They could be a little bit heavy. Well, not, I th actually, I think they are pretty good. 922, like I don't want to get too much heavier than that. Because I think I put, this plane is 11 or 1200 pounds, something like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and fly this sucker onto Columbus. Uh, I've got eight gallons of fuel. I give us a range of about a hundred miles. It's only what sixty-three, so we should be good on that. Everything is loaded. We're going kind of the north. I can't tell if it's north or west for how for our altitude. Um, let's go. I'm gonna say. 5,500. I'll say it's a little... It's, I can't really tell. It's almost like it's perfect. <laughs> like, not north or west. More the other... I, I think it's kind of more to the west. I don't know. So, it would be 6,500, but it's, we may not get up to 6,500 because it's such a short flight. We shall see. Or it would be 45... Actually, because of the clouds, let's go to just 4,500. And the PM will make this like... 2 p.m. It'll knock five hours off. Um, last position because we flew it there. It'll be fine. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and move on over to the plane. All right, everybody. Here we are in the plane. Little Piper. We got uh, all of our people in here for the weights and the fuel and everything. So that should be good. So let's not waste any time. Get our start up. The parking brake is set. Let's go ahead and prime it a few times. There's three. Let's go ahead and turn on the battery. Put the full fuel to full. Turn on the pump. Fuel pump. Turn on the mags. Beacon. Go ahead and hit the starter. There we go. She's going, let's turn off the fuel pump and lean this fuel out to about 60. Bring back the power as well. I'm going to put it at 65. There we go, there's on 65. We'll go ahead and turn on the pedo heat. And we'll turn on the radio master switch. Let's go ahead and turn on all, all of our electronics. Stand by. Alright, Tim, we'll go ahead and hit up uh, ATC. 
It's kind of hu weird that Huntington Clarence, because I could be like Huntington, West Virginia. I mean, it's Athens, it would be, I guess maybe it is, Columbus would be closer, I think. These messages. Switch that over to GPS. Hypergolf Kilo Echo Lima Sierra cleared at six India at six airport as filed. Climb and maintain four thousand five hundred. Departure is one. Let's look at our GPS. It says it says three six zero because I didn't switch yet. Thirty minutes from now. Hyper Echo Lima Sierra. Check that here in one second. Turn over to Cooney Traffic. Select runway for takeoff. It's going to be 25. We'll go ahead and announce our taxi to it. Park brakes coming off. Alright, so our GPS just moved. Uh, give her a little more power so she didn't cut off. I want to check this real quick. Our heading right now is 155. That's 155. See, that was... I, I don't understand the last flight. That kept them moving. I'm not sure if that was captured in the... Because that video got cut off, so I don't know if that was in that video or not. But I noticed the heading was messed up. It probably... At least some of that is probably in there. Because uh, it was giving me a different heading than what the GPS was saying. So it was kind of odd. So we're only 25. We're going to head right over here to the right. I think right here, we can probably just get on the runway and take off from right here. I think there's plenty of room. Almost positive, so we'll just enter the runway here. Instead of going down any further. We'll get up quick this time. I wish we could just cancel the freaking IFR from right here. The sex that they won't let us. Check something real quick. I couldn't see it from there. I should have just waited. We're almost at the hold area. I should have just waited. Come up here. Alright, parking brake is coming on. Let's uh, turn on the landing lights, the strobe lights. We'll go ahead and turn on the transponder. And tell everyone that we're taking off. Uh, I did say taxing. Yeah, it was taxing. Uh, we'll say it's kind of the west. It's kind of northwest. I don't really know. Yeah, three, two, two. So I guess it technically it is kind of more to the north. So instead of forty-five hundred, we'll go up to fifty-five hundred. Let's go ahead and check. Flaps are going out to one. One notch, I think it's 10 degrees. Uh, fuel goes to max. It's called max carb heat. Alright, parking brake is off. I should check and everything to make sure the engine is warmed up. There's the oil pressure. Yeah, oil temp is fine. It's in the green. Alright, reset my views and let's get on out of here. What do you say? It's overcast. I don't it's I don't know if it's still so windy. It's overcast, but it wouldn't be like a horrible day for flying. Look, it's got the wind going the wrong direction though. Cause we checked the wind. Yeah, she's really blowing me left. 60 knots. Go ahead and get on up. We don't have anything in the back. I left the back compartment completely empty. 80 knots. I'm going to go ahead and retract the flaps. And trim it down just a little bit. Really wanting to climb. 
though we're really light. Bring it down just a little bit more. Talk to departure real quick. Then I'll be able to concentrate on flying. Oh my goodness. See, this is why I don't like it, because sometimes they just have way too much to say. Well, it's because we're so close that they give us that last part. They're yeah, right about the 2 7 approach, though. Although we're like 60 some miles away, so they shouldn't be talking about already. And turn on the autopilot master switch. We won't use it just yet, but we'll get her we get cycled through and ready. We'll turn to the right here. We finally got our hands free, at least we will here in a second. 322, because I gotta turn the heading. There we go, 322. Although you can see it's already different. Three, two, four. Yeah, it's I don't I don't quite understand it. Maybe there's something I need to look into. We're climbing quite nice. If we could just keep this right here, I would really like it. climbing at 800 feet. I really like this. Because you know normally I it's it's been all over the place. Drift off to the right to or left too much. I just I want her to hold here, hold perfectly. Plane. Then we go over to that line. She's falling a little bit now. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to our line here. Then we'll turn on the autopilot. We're at 3,500. I'm gonna go ahead and put her out to 80. Wish I had another desk, man. I could break out those pedals, and man, it'd be so easy to fly this thing. It would actually make it a lot easier having those levers and everything. I just I don't, I can't get another desk. I'm getting laid off. Uh, what in five days will be my last day? We're starting at a new company and all kinds of stuff going on. So no money for that, really. All right, well, let's go ahead and hit this over to Nav. So we'll fly the GPS. We can get our nose down on here a little bit more. But then I hit it three times, and as soon as she started straightening out, you can see the nose just came down. All right, I'm going to let her kind of settle down there before I start trimming it again. You see, now it's coming back up. I just tire of the seesaw game. I just never had another plane that it, uh, it's been so difficult for me to trim and stuff. I just don't quite get it. I look at her just starting to fall. I've never had one like that. You know, there's no vertical speed hold on this plane, obviously. Which makes it a lot more difficult. Yes, yeah, so the north will go to 5,500. So we're getting close to it. Try it. Probably should be leaned out a lot more. 
Uh, in the winter time, you can lean it out a lot more. Or should lean it out a lot more. Then we'll go finally get the vertical speed hold on her, and then she'll hold a lot better then. Let's get off this uh, frequency. Let's just say Arnold. Just to get away from, because I don't think we can. I don't think we can get on the radios. Yeah, we're 55 out. Need to be about 30 out before we can get over to. Is it Darby Dan? So I'm going to start trimming it down here as we approach our 5500. Because this thing doesn't totally automatically pitch. It seems like it helps it some, um, but it's not like an altitude hold like in a normal plane. Normal as in what we fly the most. I'm going to put this to 60. I'm trimming it down. Not making a ton of difference. She'll come flying down here in a second. She's coming down. 5,500. Hold right there. It's like she brings it down, but she can't totally... Doesn't totally uh, hold it by pitching, because it'll... As you all have seen, it'll start talking about what they're beeping. It wants you to trim up or down. So what I'm going to do is now slowly bring the power down. I think if you bring it down too quick, uh, it'll, it'll screw up the altitude, obviously, because of the power that you put in. I'll drop it five more percent. I'll just do it slowly so she kind of tries to hold. See, 316 is our heading. Three, it, desire check is 322, but it's just that wind. We have we see how far we have to go to the left. To stay on course. I'll fly at 60%. Normally they try to get you around 50, but I'll put 60. See, as it was losing just a little bit of altitude, it'll help itself. And there's 60. And then I'll uh, watch the EGT here. I'll let the temperature drop, and then we'll start laying it out. But, uh... I'll do that while we're sped up. We've got about 50 miles to go. 51 to be exact. So I'll go ahead and speed her on up and we'll be back in just a bit.
All right, everybody's slowing her down here. You see she's wanting me to pitch up. Let's go ahead and take the altitude hold off. We're only 17 miles out. Under runway 27, it's just off to our left. So we're not, we'll just uh, come basically straight in. What this thing agree? 317. Excuse me, 314 now. All right. Come over to the right here. I have that fly the heading as so we descend. It looks pretty good here. Where's my power set at? 60% still. All right. I'd actually like to bring it back a little bit. Just don't want her to start dropping too much. Yeah, see, there she goes. There she goes. Nose over. Need to switch tanks here as well. To our right tank. Actually move over a little bit more. Let's go ahead and get on 6i6 on the radios. KTZR will be there next. Darby Dan. I hate having to try. I'm like I'm flying with my left hand on the joystick. That's why it's so wobbly and everything. Pitch up too much. I had her really pretty good right there. Just 14 miles out, and we're already down to 4,000 feet. Well, like I say, the airport elevation is 925 feet. So we're about 3,000 above right now. I'll put this to 80. We're actually probably just sing a little quick. I was actually surprised. Uh, AirNav said this thing had Pappy lights, which I'd be really surprised. A little private airstrip. Like, if it's just uh, some dude's house, like, you have Pappy lights? That's expensive. I would have to imagine. I have no Pappy lights or anything. It was just a little private airstrip by my house or something. I think I'd do that. You can see she's snowing. So I'm guessing that's what that precipitation is. I guess it could be rain, but it's probably cold enough. I actually accidentally moved that. I was uh, trying to hit the trim buttons. I accidentally moved the... Because uh, the trim buttons were actually on my uh, control right there. I accidentally slid it up. to trim her up a little bit because I don't want to descend too fast. Like 300 feet would probably be pretty, pretty good. I think I just, did I just move that again? No. Kind of sounded like it did. No, like descend right like that. That's how I want her. 300, but it should, the nose is coming up for some reason. Let's go over to the right a little bit more. Maybe we can get a little better approach in here. Hopefully we won't have a problem finding it. That is sometimes a problem with these little airstrips. It's going to be a long, narrow airstrip. That's what I'm anticipating. It's 10 miles out. Let's go ahead and call it. I was going to say, we could probably hold it 3,000. That'll put us 2,000 above. 
I'm still gonna go out a little more. Come on down just a little bit more, girl. And all of a sudden she fell. I didn't even touch it. We're almost at 3,000 feet. Oh, the nose is coming back up for some reason. Eight miles out. Three thousand altitude hold. Give her a little bit more power. Help her out there. Don't have to pitch up too much. Put it at eighty. We're about three thousand, so full rich on the mixture. Actually, wants me to trim down now. I'm trimming down plane. Let me uh, slow it down here. That'll help as well. I'm going to actually make it 70. I don't want to get going too fast because we're going to have to probably descend. If we have to descend quickly, it's going to make it hard to get down to get our, our speed down to get our flaps out. Put it to 65. You win, Blaine. You win. Come on now. They even brought the power down still. There should be pretty good. Three, four, six is. I, I don't know why this is off so much. I don't. I haven't. Really noticed until today. That's not it. That's uh, this one right here. I would imagine. Can't see like three, four, or something like that. But it's not too far away from that one. If we bring our range down. Like it's not too far away. Bring our power down. Bring our speed down. It says at two seven four degrees. It's got to be like right over here. Could that be it? Like I say, it did say it had pappy lights. Autopilot is off. Reset my views. Bring the power down. Like I say, I don't know how it has pappy lights. It's like a small private little airstrip. I'm gonna get my speed down. There we go. Flaps are coming out to one. That's what I was worried about. Bring the power back up. Just wanted to have at least one one notch of flaps out. So she's gonna get too fast here. Don't damage me flaps. Bring that up out so I don't forget to make the call on funnel. I'm gonna go ahead and call out our position. We are very, very close here. Bring up the power a little bit more. Just got to ensure that we keep on descending a little bit quicker because happy lights did show we were high. We 
should be close. It's still saying we're a little high. I guess I slowed down a little bit too soon to get the flaps out. We actually had plenty of time. It looks like a bigger airport than it was saying, because like, it like the I looked at the picture on AirNav, and it's like a, this little tiny little skinny airship, and we've seen those all over FSX. Like those tiny ass little I hate them. This one looks like it's a little bit thicker. Yeah, but I hate those little bastards. They're so they're, the narrowness is the problem. about to call that we're on final. Cut the power back a little more. What was this sin? I'm surprised that we're still so high. Six, India, six, traffic, hyper, golf, Hilo, Echo, Lima, Sierra is on final. Flaps to two? I don't know why the flaps knocks the nose down. I was supposed to balloon you and it really just knocks this plane for some reason. And I'm really having a hard time getting over to the left. There we go. Full flaps now. Yeah, like I say, I'm really surprised how it's taking us so long to get down. I'm fine with the speed. I like being a little bit quicker. Going less on the lights now and more on just looking at the runway. We're still off to the right. Keep drifting. I guess that's where the wind is pushing us. Speed is getting too low. I'm going to have to add power. We're falling just too much. All right, we're over the runway, over the threshold. Easy. <laughs> Windy. Wind did not help. This is a private airship. How is there this big hangar and everything? Go ahead and retract the flaps. It's kind of a wobbly landing. Uh, that wind didn't help. I thought we were just going to have to crab it, but it didn't really work out that way. We need to see which one we want to take. We'll take this one, because that just goes over to the fuel. I don't think there's anywhere to park on the left of that. No, we'll just park on the right of it. I don't think there's... Yeah, that building is not there. Yeah, like I say, I'm really surprised that there's, like, happy lights and stuff at this private little airstrip. Called Darby Dan. So it got to be like some dude just has his own airship. Because it Darby Dan. He's got Pappy Lights. It's, I'm so surprised. Parking brake coming on. Landing lights are off. Strobes are off. And I can't get to the pitot heat. There we go. Lean you out to 65. In the recording. Parking brake coming off. Takes you right on over here. Straight ahead. Parker. Don't go too fast. Jeez. Alright. Parking brake. Alright, let's uh. Go ahead and turn off all of our electronics. I think I got, yeah, that's off. Can't tell if that's off. There we go. Turn that off. Carb heat can go off. Cut the fuel. Beacon can go off. Mags. And the master switch goes off. I guess I. Probably had the, I think we still had the, we had that red light on? 
Did I turn that off? I think I did have that on. Yeah. I like the effect though, especially at night. It's really cool. Alright, Master Switch goes back off. Let's go over to Air Hauler 2. Unload this cargo. Little baby toys. Alright, finish the flight monitoring. Alright, took off at 2.11, land at 2.54, it's 43 minutes. Take off fuel, 44 pounds, landed with 21 pounds. Max altitude was 5,506 feet. Max pitch was negative 11.2, max roll 17.2. Alright, max speed was 118.81 knots. Max G 0.77, max G is 0, max G is 1.50, max G at C is 0. Stall false, overspeed false, landing scripts and smooth. Landing gear down true, uh, landing surface asphalt, surface damage zero, landing damage zero, came down 117.55 knots, or feet a minute, I'm sorry. Landing speed was 49.7 knots, landing pitch negative 4.96, landing roll negative 0 0.43, landing heading 271, uh, landing wind speed 11 at 222. Sweet. So now, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna position it off camera over to KTZR. We'll go back to Cooney. Maybe we'll do another flight or two after I'm from Cooney. Like, that's like 29 miles. I mean, you gotta do that. It's 29 miles. Like, you gotta do a flight like that. So we'll probably have to do one or two um, from Cooney. It actually pays more and it's lighter, but... And it actually gets us over here smaller. So maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Um, Let's look at the company information. The fleets were still both at 100%. I don't know if I told this because the last thing got cut off, but uh, my AI pilots were have been just destroying the plane. But now that I got both of them, the two that fly that Skyhawk, um, I've got both of their credentials or where you want to sit their ratings full on the landing. So I think they've been taking it easy. Uh, so I think it maybe they'll stop doing that now. We're at two hundred ninety-seven thousand. Hopefully, after the next one, we'll be at three hundred thousand. Because when I look at uh, expanding a new base, I know I talked about this last time it got cut off, uh, there's not a whole lot of scenery around us. I thought about um, Charlotte is probably going to be a base. We've got Myrtle Beach. We have to fly to them, though, to set up a base. Come on down here. Savannah, there's Hilton Head around there. There's Myrtle Beach right there. Um, It's just so far away. Like, I wouldn't want to really fly a flight there, this aircraft. Also, um, well, it's because there's Raleigh-Durham. Raleigh's, uh, I think Latin VFR did Raleigh-Durham, so I thought about buying that. But at the same time, man, like, I'm losing my job in a few days. I don't want to really buy any scenery. There's Raleigh-Durham right there. That's not too far. So I'm not sure that it's a whole lot closer than Charlotte. I mean, it's pretty close to Charlotte, too. So we could have bases with both of them, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to put up another base. And I also want to um, get another plane. I'm not necessarily going to stop this one, but I want to f get another plane for sure. Um, we'll do that at probably like the same time. Oh, there it is. Marketplace. Um, what we'll probably get next is probably the Baron B-58. Actually, no, that's not what we'll get next. Well, we could. It doesn't really matter. We'll probably get um the Comanche next, and we'll fly that some, and we'll kind of switch back and forth. I'm sure between the Cherokee and the Comanche, we'll get a Baron B-58. I mean, we're doing really good on money. Air hauler two, that's really sweet that we have passenger flights. We're not making a ton of money off of them, but it's still pretty daggone good. I mean, we just paid our bills because it's the 31st, and we have how much money in the bank? Yeah, almost three hundred thousand. So a new base is going to cost a lot of money to get open. That's where the uh, most money will be used. I can, we probably can't even open it, Charlotte, because it's going to be so expensive. Bases. Let's see. I can, where I, I always lose this. How to do this. Um, I think it's actually, I think I know how. If I want to fly this aircraft to KCLT, it's opening, yeah, nine hundred twenty-five thousand. 
Yeah, I don't think we had that. <laughs> we got 300 grand. I don't know that Myrtle Beach would be any less expensive. Let's check that out real quick. Myrtle Beach is Kate. NYR. Yeah, 150,000. We could do that. Hilton Head would be nice, although it's a little further away because it's to the south. I think it's right here. Near Savannah. So who knows? Um, man, that's a real far away uh, to really be doing any flights. Uh, but, you know, because that adds, a, well, it doesn't really add a, another weight and more passenger flights because I want to fly, like, switch back and forth between those two planes and get a Baron and stuff like that. And uh, as we start progressing, we'll probably start adding the smaller planes to more passenger flights, which will be really good. Although, I, mean, I could set up to where we only do use one plane for like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and the rest of the days it will be open. So we could do something like that. Because definitely, I don't want the plane, any planes really sitting around. So maybe like three days a week, we could have the Comanche doing one, and then we, it switches over the next, like the next three days, it switches over to the Piper. So which one whichever one would be available, we could take. That's probably a smart way to do it. That way it's always kind of up in the air and making us money and stuff like that. We yeah, have the next one. We're going to go to KTZR and I'll fly it down to Cooney. I'll position it to KTZR and we'll record the flight down to Cooney. So right up here in Columbus. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. So that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you all did enjoy it. Catch you guys on the next flight.